This video is a complementary series to the Simple Cloud series. In that series, we created this simple set of Flask microservices that interacted with the document database. We containerized that and built it with, with Docker and then deployed it with the simplest container runtime available to the cloud provider we're running. So in AWS, that would, that's App Runner. For Azure, it's uh, Container Apps. And in for GCP, it's Cloud Run. Now, this was a good example for, for doing it, or a good series for doing these, these GitHub Actions, because the build between the three providers are remarkably similar. The build consists of three phases. The first phase is to build the cloud native uh, container registry. Then we're going to run it. That's the first phase. The second phase is we run a Docker build to build our uh, Flask microservices in a container. Then we push that container into the repository that we created. The third step is to instantiate that container instance using the simplest runtime available in the cloud provider. So let's talk a little bit about uh, CICD. That's a set of modern uh, development principles centered around how you build and deploy software more efficiently and quickly. And what GitHub Actions is, is just one tool of many to, to implement that, uh, that philosophy. And so this allows you to build your um, GitHub code inside of GitHub and share it across teams. Um, and it can be automated. So when you push stuff, it builds run. It's very flexible. We're going to do everything manually, but there's a lot of power in GitHub Actions and we're just sort of scratching the surface with the series. So what are the steps for creating uh, uh, to configuring these GitHub Actions? Because they've already been created for you to use. So the first step is you need to create a new GitHub repository from the template. So each one of our examples at AWS Azure GCP is a template repository. So what you need to do is if I go back to the code here, this is GCP version, and it's this green button right here. You're going to click on use this repository and create a new repository. So you walk through that exercise. I typically create these privately uh, because then I start putting in build secrets. I just get nervous, so I make them private. But you, it's up to you. Um, then uh, once that's done, the next step is you want to clone the new repository to your local environment. And so this allows you to configure the back end. So let's talk about the back end. Well, normally when you run a build, uh, there is this file called uh, terraform.tfstate. And we'll look at it briefly. And this is a giant JSON file that stores the state of your build. And when you do apply or plan, what Terraform is doing is taking its managed state here and going and comparing it to what's actually deployed on your cloud provider. And that plan will go show you what it needs to destroy, create to make sure the plan matches what's actually there. So this is key to the whole thing. Now, normally I'm sitting here running it and I'm on a, my private build box and I'm running this build and I, I have the state. All a backend is doing is saying, let's move this state file to somewhere that's shared so everybody can do a build or many people can do builds off the same state. And so where would you do that? Well, logically, what's the easiest way to share files on the cloud providers? Uh, S3 is going to be for AWS, so you're going to put this state file in S3 and everybody can reference that file that has permissions to that S3 bucket. Then you've got for Azure, it's going to be a storage account, so you would go back to the storage account. And then for GCP, it's a storage bucket. So all, we're, all the backend fancy words are basically to take this file, this TF state, and put it in the cloud shared so multiple people can run the build uh, on the same state. So you you Let's go back to the instructions. So that's what a backend state is. So what we've done is there's this, a project or there's a directory in the project called 00 backend. And what that does is creates that S3 bucket, creates everything you need for a backend state, and then creates the actual Terraform files that allows you to use that backend and puts it in the right place. So we'll go through running through that pipeline. We'll look at the files, what, what they look like, what the backend files look like. They're pretty simple, but basically it says go use this S3 bucket, go use this storage account, etc. And so you run this build script, it'll create them the backend, create the TF state files, 
And then what we need to do is next step is to push all the all those backend files into your original project back into GitHub. Okay, at this point, we're we're now ready to try to run some of these builds. But to do that, you may remember when we did the um, GCP or the setup for all the environments, GCP, Azure, whatever. The we went through the Terraform set, setup, and essentially for AWS, you've got these three environment variables you need to set. For Azure, you got the four environment variables. For GCP, you've got that big pile of JSON. And so what you need to do is configure these values within GitHub Actions. And so to do that, if I go and click on Settings, and I go down on the side here, and it's like Secrets and Variables, you're going to be Actions, and you're going to see I can create my, my secrets here. So I'm using GCP, so the only one I have to set is GCPC JSON. We will walk through this these steps for every every cloud provider um, and get everything set up to the point where you can actually run your GitHub Actions. So I've configured my GCP project for GitHub Actions. So uh, within here, um, there's a section called Actions. And so in these action sections, for each one of these projects, I've have created four GitHub actions. And the first one is build solution, and that pretty much corresponds to the apply sh shell script. Then we have a check build environment that uh, corresponds to the check env shell script. Destroy uh, destroys the solution. It's obviously the destroy sh, and then validate, which validates to make sure the solution's running and all the inputs are reporting successfully. So that's uh, the final phase. So what we're going to do is I'm going to run this guy. So I'm going to click on build, say run workflow. And it takes a second to kick off. And what you will see is those three steps that we talked about are encapsulated in the uh, build or in the action. So you've got the you build the repository, then we build the flash container, then we build the instance, and then the last phase is just to validate it. So what do these look like? Well, there's a lot of setup here because we're running on a common set of hardware or virtual machines. And so it's got to set up Terraform and do a couple of things. And so if you click on apply, this looks much like the apply.sh file gives you. It's going through the, the states, tells you what you're going to add, add and remove. Um, so it's the same thing. Then we have the Docker thing, the Docker build. And let's look at the build the flask container. And you can see it's uh, using the credentials JSON. It is using an Ubuntu as a base image, and then it's all the stuff you associated with a uh, Docker build image. And at the end, it pushes it up. You can see it's exporting to um, your your um, your repository that you've created. Then the third stage is we actually run it. So we'll go back to the apply Terraform. There's a lot of setup here, and it's going through and setting up uh, the runtime. Finally, you've got the validate solution. Go to validate solution. You can see good to go pass, all the past. I can click on that and it'll give me the smoke test. So there you have it. I have built the project. I've configured it for GitHub Actions. I've built the project within this interface, not my local environment. And so the last thing I'm going to do is we, we're going to be good stewards of our cloud uh, accounts. So I'm going to hit destroy. And I'm going to run that.